I want to update you on the food shortage situation. So it's been a while since we talked about this topic. So my previous video, I explained that September is key. That's because in September, we begin to see the crop yields, the harvest. So we were expecting lower crop production. Consequently, higher food prices here in America and food shortages in at-risk countries around the world. The results... They're starting to roll in and it's turning out to be as expected. And the situation, it's expected to get worse next year in 2023. So let's begin again. Let's get started with rising input costs. Fertilizer prices have started to come down since the springtime. However, prices are still up significantly compared to a year ago. So what you're looking at right now, this is the one year chart. And this is the five year charts of fertilizer prices. So prices are up a lot compared to 12 months ago, but compared to 24 months ago. Let me give you the details. I'm going to share these stats with you. In September of 2021, the price of fertilizer for corn was averaging $175 per acre. In September of 2022, it increased to $247 per acre, which is a 41% increase. For soybeans, it went from $85 an acre to $110. That's a $25 increase or up 29%. In terms of diesel fuel prices, take a look for yourself. This is coming from AAA for gas prices here in America. So look at the price of diesel today, compare it to a month ago, compare it to a year ago. It's still significantly elevated. The price of diesel continues to remain high because of low inventories. It's just an issue of supply and demand. So we don't have more capacity at the refineries to produce more diesel. So refineries are already outputting at their maximum capacity. Additionally, oil prices are expected to rise. So we can expect diesel fuel prices to stay elevated or even go higher. And the diesel fuel situation, it's even worse in Europe. This month in October, multiple refineries in Europe are offline for maintenance. And then you have the strikes in France at their refineries. They're striking over compensation. Fax Global Energy said, and I quote, the French outages come at exactly the wrong time for Europe's energy security, ahead of the looming embargo on imports of Russian products. Diesel fuel, it's expected to spike in price in mid-January to February. On top of increasing input costs, this year's growing season, it's been plagued by bad weather here and internationally. From America to France to China, the consequences are showing up in the harvest data and shrinking inventories. So take a look. So you're looking at corn inventory. The world's corn stocks, they're down to 12-year lows and it's expected to get worse. By the end of the 2022-2023 crop year, corn inventories will be down to 80 days worth of consumption. This is going to be smaller than 2012 when we had the global food crisis and rioting. According to Reuters, wheat inventories are expected to drop to nine-year lows. They're expecting U.S. soybeans to fall to nine-year lows as well. If you're going to have lower yields in corn, soybeans, etc., this is also going to have consequences for dairy and livestock farmers that rely on those crops to feed their animals. So it's going to be a vicious cycle of food price inflation and shortages. Now let's take a look at the harvest data and the crop yields. So we're going to begin with the United States of America and then we're going to take a look internationally. According to the USDA's National Agricultural Statistics Service, in the U.S., corn production is down 8% compared to 2021. Soybean production is down 3% from 2021. Analysts were expecting a drop in corn, but the drop in soybean production was unexpected. So it's been a consistent theme all around the world. Higher input costs, fertilizer and diesel fuel prices, bad weather from droughts to flooding, and lower crop yields. In the European Union, the corn harvest is in full swing. The European Commission is forecasting a harvest of 55 million tons. This is the lowest yield since 2007, so this is the worst harvest in 15 years. The EU, they had their problems worsened by the droughts and the heat waves this summer. So Hungary was hit the worst. Their agricultural ministry said that their crop yield will fall by 50% this year to 3 million tons. So they're going to be flipping from a net exporter to a net importer. France, 
Lowest production in three decades. Italy, crop yields expected to fall by 40%. Germany, corn harvest to fall by 19%. So let me say this about Ukraine. Ukraine harvested 42 million tons of corn last year. This year, they're expected to harvest 25 million tons. That's a drop of 40%. They're still having difficulty exporting their wheat as well, even after the UN brokered that deal with Russia. And you probably remember hearing on the news the heat waves in Britain. So they had their driest summer since 1935. The UK's environmental agency is reporting falling crop yields on onions to beets to potatoes, ranging from 10% to as much as 50%. And of course, we have Pakistan. The Prime Minister of Pakistan says that they're facing food shortages. The organization Save the Children, they're saying that 3.4 million children in Pakistan are facing chronic hunger. So they had the deadly flooding from the monsoon rains. The flooding was so bad that it covered more than one third of Pakistan. So more than 1,500 people died, thousands were injured, and even more were displaced. The International Rescue Committee says that the flooding damaged more than 3.6 million acres of crops in Pakistan. The United Nations, including the US, have already sent more than 60 plane loads of food and supplies. So, I mean, that definitely helped. It wasn't enough as food inflation and shortages ravage Pakistan. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, says that we're currently in the worst global food crisis since 2008. They said that 1.3 billion people are food insecure. This is up 10% from a year ago. The IMF said that the lives and livelihood of 345 million people are in immediate danger. I wanted to show you this heat map of food inflation. So red is bad, purple is extremely bad. So if it's red in a developed nation like the US, that means food price inflation. If it's red in a developing nation, then you can expect food shortages. If it's purple in a developing nation, then I mean, famine will be a real threat. The Food and Agricultural Organization, the FAO, they made an assessment. They're saying that 45 countries are in need of external food assistance. There's 33 countries in Africa, nine in Asia, two in Latin America, and one in Europe. The IMF says at least 10 countries are likely to be asking for emergency assistance. Countries on the UN's at-risk list include Afghanistan, Algeria, Egypt, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Somalia, South Sudan, Sri Lanka, Sudan, and Tunisia. So these are the hunger hotspots that face catastrophic conditions. The World Bank has earmarked $30 billion to help countries in need. President Joe Biden has announced $3 billion in funding to fight global food insecurity. And I want to end with this. Here's the monthly food price index from the FAO. This is international. As you can see, food prices have fallen since the earlier part of 2022. However, prices are higher than they were in 2021 and 2020. Now, I want to explain the situation to you because it's very important. So the recent decline in food prices, that's because a stronger U.S. dollar has brought down prices, shipping costs have declined, multiple countries have lifted their export restrictions, and global growth has slowed down. So the primary driver of food inflation in 2021 was because of logistical problems. Next year, in 2023, food inflation is expected to be driven higher by production issues, so from lower supply. Therefore, the food crisis is expected to worsen in 2023. We still have a few more weeks of harvest data that we're waiting on for the bulk of this year's growing season, but preliminary data shows what we were expecting. Rising fuel and fertilizer prices have resulted in lower crop yields. Adverse weather from droughts to flooding have exacerbated harvests in multiple countries. Countries in Africa and the Middle East, they are at the highest risk of the threat of famine. And low-income individuals in wealthier countries, they face more financial hardship from ongoing food prices.